Welcome to the Sports Arena, your front row ticket to the best in sports talk and entertainment. Great analysis, top name guests, and news you can use from the sports landscape. So take your seats, sit back, and relax. As you, you are, are now in the Sports Arena. Arena. You know what you're capable of. I like this kind of fire. Fix it. You bet you I want to go. And here's your host, Eric Wilson. I'm like, all right, let's go. I get, we get losses. I'm like, I need a minute. <laughs> Collect myself. What's going on, everybody? Your man, Eric Wilson, here on the Sports Arena, November 2nd edition. And uh, before I get started, let me just say one thing to everybody watching this video today. If you haven't done so already, go out and vote. This election is probably one of the biggest elections we've ever, ever had to be a part of. And it's so important that everybody gets out there and does it. With that being said, let's jump into business here today on the sports arena. So last week I had the privilege of interviewing a young man. He was a 2020 NBA prospect in Mr. Michael Lenore. He actually is a part of the organization, the Creative Young Minds. And uh, again, a big thank you to my man, Fago White Franklin III, Super Journalist 87, for embracing me and giving me the opportunity to speak with now those who are in charge of creating young minds. So please welcome in to the sports arena. I have Dr. Ackerman and Coach Crowder joining me here today. Good afternoon. Thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. And more importantly, welcome to the sports arena. Thank you for having us. We're very excited to be here. Thank you. So if you don't mind just sharing with our listeners and viewing audience, um, both you know who you are and how this Creative Young Minds has actually started. Absolutely. I am Dr. Shira Ackerman and um, my husband and I, Mathis Crowder, we started the program back in 2011. Um, we moved down to Texas and started the Creating Young Minds and Creating Young Minds Academy, which was um, is a prep school for high school players and um, young men in their postgraduate year outside of high school before going off to college. And the objective with our organization, and we're, um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, is to give young men opportunities that they wouldn't have access to otherwise. And basketball is what we use as our tool, right, to gain their attention and their interest. Um, but our objectives are really to help them grow as young men off the court. Um, and since we started with a lot of high school players, our focus was their academics. Um, and then um, now that we've got our professional basketball team with the basketball league as part of our program now, we have a lot of um, guys who have already graduated high school, um, have graduated college or attended college, but um, didn't graduate because they didn't have enough credits based on um, the classes they were told to take and given versus what they should have been doing um, while they were playing college sports. So we've we've always had the focus to um, help young men fix their academics, right? When we started, we had a lot of guys that had 1.0, 2.0 GPAs, um, not because they weren't capable, but because they weren't given opportunities to be successful. And you know, we started with a charter school here in um, in the Texas, the Dallas area, uh, Winfrey Charter Academy in Irving, and it was a a great school for our program because it was all self paced, and all of our high school players they could go and they could fix the grades that um, you know anything a D and and that they failed right, so they could go and they could retake those classes and fix those grades, and our guys. Um, what ended up happening, they were a very competitive group on the basketball court that first year we started, but now they turned that competitiveness towards each other in the classroom. And it was really neat to see. They would compete and see who would, um, who would get the, the, the better grades or who would finish their assignments faster um, because you could get through coursework at your own pace. So they could go through things and make up grades fast. Um, and our guys... Each year we had high school players, their GPAs for their high school years were um, definitely over a 3.0, but most of them were close to a 4.0. These were guys oh, wow. getting all A's because they were in an environment that helped them be successful. And that's all they needed were teachers and a school that believed in them to help them figure out what they needed to do to be successful. And 
over the years, we've had probably close to 100 plus guys um, go off to college and earn college scholarships to play basketball. And all of these guys, they were unknown, right? So they were undiscovered, right? They, they either didn't play in high school, they um, sat the bench, um, they played on uh, JV as juniors and seniors. You know, they, they weren't given the opportunities to really play and develop their skills. And when they came to us, we were able to give them all those pieces they were missing. And I'll let Mathis talk about that. And then their academics were in the right direction. So now they were able to earn college scholarships um, to go play. And when they got there, you know, the, the politics of college sports, everybody knows all sports, you know, it, it's, it's determined by the recruiting class, right? How high they were ranked, what stars they had, um, how much money was paid for that recruiting class, right? And so our guys, um, they didn't have stars, they don't have any rankings. They're very talented, work harder than everyone. There are no maintenance, they go to class, um, they stay out of trouble. So they're the face of the program. They don't play. Okay. So over the years, you know, we, we figured out we had to come up with a better solution. Um, we needed them to be able to be successful on the basketball court because they worked so hard and they were so talented that they could play. Um, and so that's what led us to the, the basketball league. Um, but before we get to that, I'll let Mathis talk to you about the guys that we get in our program and why we do what we do. Yeah. And I just have one quick question before coach Crowder, and it is actually for you. So I have to ask with your style of coaching, being in this organization and basically elevating these young men to that next level, is your coaching style more of a, and I'm going to use NBA coaches who I love. Are you more of a Phil Jackson type of coach or are you more of a Larry Brown type of coach? Um, to be honest with you, I, I can't say I'm a type of anybody. Okay. Um, um, there's 8 billion people in the world and God give us all different gifts. So um, I'll say I take a little bit from Phil Jackson because he's a philosopher. Um, he, I mean, he makes you think. Um, and that's what I do with the young men. Uh, I do have a little, little, little Larry Brown in me where I'm hard on them and hard nose. Don't give them room. Uh, but they know I love them and care about them. Um, one thing I always tell them, um, there's two important times of your life is when you first was born and then you learn your purpose on earth. And that's, those are the most important times of your life. And when you when you figure out your purpose, life is so much easier. Um, one thing I always tell the young men, um, everybody in sports world and even in the world, they give you a cap or they give you a ceiling. You can't get no better than this. You can't get better than this. Um, I'm in my middle 40s and... I still play basketball with the boys. I still run up and down. I still, I'm still working on my game. I'm still working on a lot of things and I'm getting better every day. It doesn't make any sense, but I am. And the boys just be in shock. Like why are you not tired? Because I haven't gave myself a ceiling. Um, I wasn't great in technology. Now I'm starting to be a little better in technology. I, I, I will let her take care of all that, but now I'm learning more. Um, but only thing what I teach the young men is know your purpose, don't give yourself a ceiling. Um, I always get the young men that nobody want, and I'm okay with that. And it's about development, um, teaching them how to be entrepreneurs, how to be business owners. Um, stop being a consumer all the time. <laughs> you know, be, be the seller. But let the consumer come to you. Um, and, and so that's the biggest thing we teach. Um, one thing I, I've been blessed with is um, God has given me a gift where I can look at somebody for five or 10 minutes and say, this is what he needs to fix. And this is how we're going to fix it. But my thing is, is where you fix it at is mind, body, and soul. When okay. you have that, you can develop more. It's just not, I don't, I don't really just look at talent. I look at, okay, where could he be? Now, if he buys in, where could I take him? How far can he go? That's how I look at the whole picture. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons why we, Invested into uh, the TBL league, the basketball league. Oh, it's the dog. It's okay. Sorry, it's, 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 this is the 2020 era. We got to take all distractions. So they're in support of you. So keep on going. <laughs> so we, in, you know, with the TBL league and the TBL league, we're in our fourth year. 
Um, we're in our fourth year, going into our fourth year. Um, I love the TBL league. It's it's amazing league. Um, it, it's 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 equal. It's equality. You know, a guy can come in and play for Duke, and then a guy can come into a D three. A guy can come into NEI, and they're all in the same gym. And whoever balled the hardest and do the best, we don't care if you was a five star. We don't care if you was a two star, three star. It, it doesn't matter. You know, we don't even care if you didn't play high school ball or college ball. If, if, if you if you outplay and outcompete that guy from Duke, we're picking that guy, not the guy from Duke. Wow. So it, it's it's equality. It's not it, it's not basically it's not politics involved in it. It's just it's equal. So that's what we're all about um, in a nutshell. <laughs> and, and so what you folks do, basically, if I can just kind of surmise this, if you put equity in everybody and as a person elevates themselves, mm -hmm. they are given the same opportunity no matter what walk of life they come from. Mm -hmm. Yep, 100 percent. So I, I did see you folks on IG Live today. I was following you. Could you just talk about what you were doing? Because it seemed like, again, I'm assuming part of your program is giving back to the community. Yes. And um, so what what we do, because we're trying to help our young men see something much bigger than them. Right. There, there's a much bigger picture and we want them to be important members of their community. And we want the community to value them having absolutely nothing to do with basketball. You know, they're going to come and watch you. They're going to love you because you're a basketball player. And, and that's great. But we want them to see you as a person. Um, and. The Basketball League, the way that Evelyn Magley and David Magley um, have set up the league is it's all about community. And all the teams all around the country are supposed to be impacting their community. And so they do. They go out to schools. I mean, now that's a little bit limited, but um, community service. Um, they're out at parks. They're um, out doing um, uh, – some of them are, are setting up um, events to – get food for Thanksgiving, right? And for gifts for the holidays. And so any activity that they can do to be an important part of their community is what their team is about. And so what we do is every Monday we go and we work with uh, CCA, Christian Community Action here in Louisville. And we work with their food pantry. And what happens with their food pantry before COVID is um, the senior citizens, they get certain vouchers, right? Certain dollar amounts to go into the food pantry once a week and buy their groceries, right? So they get to pick whatever food that they want for the week that, that matches the amount of money that they're given. Um, and once COVID hit, they couldn't go out. Right. And so CCA continued the entire time. They never closed. And so what they did is they took all the food and donations that they get from organizations all around the area and they started delivering the food. So we joined them because we for the we're actually a little over two months now. Um, we have because we have a lot of young men. So when I approached them, I said, you know, we have um, a large number of, of able bodies. You know, we we can do a lot of stuff and we have, you know, a, a 12 passenger van and we've got, you know, guys that want to help and give back. So tell me what you need us to do and we'll come. And so we we go out and we help um, some of our guys stay in their warehouse and pack all the food that goes on the shelves that then gets packed up and delivered. Um, the rest of us, we pack the cars of all the other drivers that do the weekly deliveries. And then we go and we take out three different car loads of deliveries all around the area and deliver food to the senior citizens. Um, and that's, you know, we did it because of everything that was going on with the pandemic and the shutdown, all we kept hearing about were how there's so many people that don't have access to food, right? Um, they can't go out and get it. Uh, they don't have the money to go buy it. Uh, they don't have family around to help them get food. Um, and, you know, children all the way to senior citizens. So when we found out CCA was doing this, we said, you know, we'll, we'll do anything you need to help. Um, and their pantry is operating this way through the end of the year. Um, and then they're hoping that back in, in January, the senior citizens will be able to come back in. Um, but the people that we go to, I mean, it's the same people every week. You know, they get to know us um, and they know the guys and they're excited to see everybody. They're, 
most of them haven't left their house since March. Wow. You know, so yeah. when we go, we're there and, and they want to talk, you know, and we get to know them. And it started, you know, because of COVID, you know, it's, um, you know, you, you bring the food, you, there's it's lots of boxes and bags of stuff and you just knock on the door and you walk away. Right. Because not everyone's going to be comfortable, you know, interacting. Um, and, but after, yeah, and everyone wears a mask. Um, and after <laughs> the first two, sorry, after the first, two, the first two weeks, um, a lot of the people we go deliver to, because these are heavy boxes, right? they can't lift all of this. Um, they'll let us come in and drop the stuff off. And then we stay and we talk, you know, and you can tell that they're, they're lonely. You know, they, they don't get to go out and interact. And right. a lot of them asked us, do you know when we'll be able to go back? You know, do, did, has CCA said anything about when we're going to have, you know, bingo and when, you know, because they miss their social interaction. You know, I think everyone kind of forgot during the shutdown that you've got, you know, the, the senior citizen population, they haven't gone anywhere either. And they, they're not on technology. They're not sitting there talking to everybody on their phone and on a computer. They, they really are removed from, from their social group. Um, and it's, you know, it's been very hard for them also. But we do it and, and our guys absolutely love it. Um, and so, you know, we're going to do it all the way through the end of the year. And then whatever they do starting in January will be part of that as well. Nice. Talking with Dr. Ackerman and Coach Crowder from Creative Young Minds in Texas. So I have to ask you both, you know, you talked about the impact that the coronavirus has done, you know, just in your community and what you are able to still provide for those who cannot. What are some of the obstacles that you yourself and Creative Young Minds have had to face? And how were you able to keep the doors on, keep the doors open, the lights on, all that? How were you able to continually offer these types of programs to these young men who are looking to, to elevate themselves and want to be a part of your organization? Well, I'll say this. We never stopped. You know, when the pandemic came, everything shut down and people didn't, didn't function and, and didn't move. And so what we did is, um, I think the pandemic was a blessing for us. Um, uh, we learned how to market better. We learned how to technology, we learned how to use things more and how to market our program. And what we did with the boys while the pandemic was going on, we stayed in touch with them, stayed encouraging, saying positive things. Cause you gotta remember they're young and you, 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 can, you they, they can't come out of their house for three months, can't do nothing, can't be social, can't do this. So that hurts them. Um, so what we did is we, we always talked to them, stayed positive. Um, one of the things we did is we talked to them about starting their businesses during the pandemic. Uh, we had a couple of guys start their own business during the pandemic. Um, we did a lot of work on that and, and, and it's been very successful. So then when they open things back up, it's still with the little lockdown and everything, but you open things back up. We got back on beat. We got back going, you know. Uh, we had our summer league in July. We had our fall league in September, and now we're doing uh, a winter league to get ready for the TBL, the undiscovered league to get ready for the TBL. So the biggest thing is if you go to our social media, you know, we always put up positive vibes and, and, and undiscovered. And a lot of times we're not in mainstream media, so you don't hear all these good things. You just hear all the negative. Um, Very true. All the, all the negative narrative. And that's what they want you to hear. No disrespect to anybody. But, you know, sometimes it needs to be positive energy. You know, people need to hear positive energy. A lot of people, um, they get drained listening to it. It can drain you. It can drain your spirit and listen to negative energy so much. Every time you turn on the TV or every time you look on social media, you know, good energy. And so my biggest thing in life is to spread, um, know my, I know my purpose and spread positive energy, try my best to help as many people as I can and to God don't wake me up no more. So, I mean, that's how I look at life. You know, when he don't wake me up, he's done. I've done my purpose. Right. No, and I think that's a huge message. And I think, you know, I, I am of the mindset that I think that transition of always focusing on the negative and instead spreading that love and that, that you know, just positivity, I think we are moving towards that. That is my hope, you know, and I, but I am starting to see that, which I'm very thankful, you know, that there are organizations like Creative Young Minds who are able to provide 
those those undiscovered talents or those gentlemen or, and or ladies who are just who are needing that path and that little bit of guidance and push because you see the potential in them more than they see in themselves. Mm -hmm. So I'm very honored and saying thank you for what both of you are doing. Um, if, if you would indulge me, I'd like you both, I'm, I'm gonna give you the entire screen here. I'd like both of you to take a minute or two, just talk about your organization, how a, a young man or, or woman can, and can get involved or be a part of it. And I'd like to close out with that because I really feel like your message needs to be elevated. So if you would do me that, I'd be greatly appreciative. Well, thank you very much. Um, what, you know, when it comes to being part of, of our program and what we're doing, um, you know, young men, whether they're in high school, um, they've graduated high school, they, they're in college, they've graduated college, or they didn't go to college, um, and they want to be part of our program. And we call it that, you know, we don't call it a professional team. Um, we call it a program because we're so much more than just one team. Um, they can get in touch with us, you know, through all of our social media accounts. They can get in touch with us through our website. Um, the easiest way to find us is, you know, searching us through Google and just typing in creating young minds and you'll find us on all the platforms. Um, but what we what we do, you know, our, our program is very rigorous. It's it's very difficult. It's very structured um, because we want uh, young men to be extremely successful and figure out how to follow their dreams and not let the negativity of other people change the path that they're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, we, we have guys from all over the, the United States. We have guys from abroad also. We have, you know, right now a young man from Algeria and from Montenegro. Um, we get players from all over the world and our objective is just to help them be successful. Um, when players don't live locally, you know, there's there's a process to get in touch with us so that we can have you come and, and visit and, and stay and because we house our guys because um, we have so many that aren't local so that, you know, you can come to practices and workouts and, and see what we're about and meet the other guys and then, you know, decide for yourself if this is for you, you know, and it gets gives us the same opportunity. When it comes to guys who want to join the program to play on the professional team or to play in the Undiscovered League that we're, we're started right now to get ready for the TBL season, we sit on the phone with guys for anywhere from a half an hour to, to an hour and a half finding out who they are. You know, we're more more um what's more important to us is character and it's not about basketball or anything else if we can find out who you are as a person and your character aligns with the types of guys we want to help then you know this may be the right place for you and even if it's not we still want to help guys get opportunities other places you know because the tbl is growing so much Guys can come in and try and play for, you know, play in our league. And if they're not a good fit for us, that's okay. Right now there's 28 teams in the league. There may be 32 by the time the season starts. There's lots of opportunities to play for teams. And then the objective of the TBL is to get guys jobs in bigger leagues around the world. You know, so it, you come to us for an opportunity it doesn't mean that we're going to say, we really like you. We don't want anyone else to ever see you. You're going to stay with us forever. You know, the objective is to come to us and grow and um, build your own business and find out who you are as a young man and impact your community and then be successful when you leave us. So creating something that allows a person to be better when they leave than when they walked in. This is huge. Yes. And as you can see, folks, I put the website here on the bottom, www.creatingyourmind.org. Make sure you check them out. Dr. Ackerman, Coach Crowder, thank you so much for this today. I really appreciate it. This was exactly what people needed to hear and see about. Um, best of luck in all that you do. I look forward to seeing your journey as you both continue on. And hey, anytime you want to jump on the sports arena, give me a holler, give me a shout. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you thank for you. having us. Thank you for having us. No worries. So do it for your man, Eric Wilson, on the sports arena. Everyone have a great day. And again, before I forget, not I'm not going to forget. I'm going to tell you one more time. Go out and vote. <laughs>